All right, you can be seated. All right, just a reminder, uh, Pastor Anthony is gone this weekend for a short vacation. He will be back Tuesday morning at 10, Bible study, and you can come here to be a part of that in the gym, or you can do it on WebEx. All you have to do is get his number, call him, and he'll set you up uh, to be a part of that study on the book of Judges. Wednesday night, regular service at 7, and it's also on WebEx. And so the same number, just contact Pastor Anthony, and um, we can get that number for you. Absolutely, we can help you out. So uh, if you'd be interested in that, Wednesday night's teens, and they'll be meeting in the gym at 7. And uh, also Impact, our group from 18 to 26, will... Uh, be meeting this week, and uh, all you have to do is contact Amanda Westcote. We have that number for you if you're interested in that Bible study. Uh, then we can help you out. Blood Drive, the 8th of August, and uh, we have a redcross.org to get in touch or the 800 number. All of that we'll have out there if you're interested in any of those things. And we also have sheets. I didn't get to all of you, but for Operation Christmas Child, uh, to pick up one of those sheets, information sheets that'll help you to know what to get, what they need, and uh, who that they are for. So they're right out there on the table as you leave, if you didn't pick one up before. Yard sale, tentatively set for October. We will let you know as this ever-changing news world goes on, uh, maybe we'll know uh, by October 1st, but it could change on the 2nd, so don't Okay, you don't think that's funny anymore. Anyway, <laughs> I don't either. But anyway, uh, that's the deal. So just stay tuned and we'll help you out with the information. Thank you. You know, with the craziness in the world, and I think we all would agree it is crazy, amen? Yeah. Yes, amen. But regardless of all the craziness going on, we know who is in control. Amen. We know, as Pastor Anthony says, we know who's in control of who's in control. <laughs> so we're gonna sing a song called All the Earth. Won't you stand? We wanna sing this to him because we are here to praise him, to worship, to honor him. So put your concerns on the shelf, open your heart to him today and give him the praise that he is due.
today. Bless his name. For he alone is worthy of our worship and our praise. Pastor Sam. Let me put my eyes on because I can't see no more. And I see, <laughs> I seen Ingrid pick up my Bible. It almost fell apart on you. Where'd you go? Where'd she go? Oh, there you are. She picked up my Bible and my poor Bible, I'll tell you. My poor Bible. Look, it don't have no back. This is falling off. Look at it. Look at it. And you know what? And I don't want to get rid of it. I don't want to get rid because I know, like, as soon as I open it up, I know, like, where I got stuff highlighted, marked down, and this and that. And it's like, I could go right to, don't want to get rid of it, but I think I'm going to have to bite the bullet. I know, I know, I know, I know. All right, so uh, enough of me yapping. You know what, oh, real quick, though, you know what's the best thing about 11 o'clock? I could keep you here forever. I, I, there's no other services. See, that's, that's, that's the good thing. That's the good thing. All right, so let's bow. Let's bow and let's just ask God for him to come and bless. Father, we thank you. Thank you for today. Lord, thank you for this cool air, Lord. Thank you for your, you giving us your house to preach in. Thank you, Lord. So, Father, we pray at this time that you would open our ears, our minds, Lord, that your word, not me, your word would transform us into the image of you. So, Father, once again, we just thank you. Thank you for your son. Thank you for the precious, precious blood that was shed. Because of his death, we may have life. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, yes, it was hot out there. It was hot out there. Oh, my goodness. Yes. So I'm like, I appreciate it, Aunt. You know, Pastor Anthony. Appreciate it, Aunt. You give me this, this one Sunday to do, and it's 106 out. Appreciate it, buddy. Yeah. Yeah, you're probably in the pool right now. Yeah. That's good. That's good. But it was hot. I didn't even feel like wearing this. I felt like wearing a tank top and shorts, to tell you the truth. You know? Tony Garrier, at the, the, the first service, uh, he goes, are you going to tuck your shirt in? I said, no, no, no. Because I brought two fans from home, and I put them on the, the platform out there in the outside service, and that air was just blowing my shirt up, and I said, oh, at least it feels a little bit. You know, I was not tucking nothing in. No, 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 no. Uh-uh. But it's hot. It's hot, right? Tomorrow's supposed to be what? 106 or the heat index or something? 108, whatever they're talking. Ay, ay, ay. So it's hot. So let me ask you something. What did you put on this morning? I ain't talking about deodorant. Amen. That's what we're going to be talking about. And we're going to go through some things that I think that the more and more we go on in life, we get comfortable. I remember when I just, when we just got saved. I remember we had a townhouse in Akko. And I remember I was vacuuming the, 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 the living room. Yeah, men, you could do that. You could vacuum. Yeah, men. And uh, I'm vacuuming. And it's really, the, I mean, I've seen it before, but it never really hit home to me. But I was watching, uh, it must have been close to Easter, because uh, the Passion of the Cross was on. Not ours, that we put on, but it was, it was on TV. And I remember vacuuming, and we had this tan carpet. And I remember vacuuming, and I remember crying. And I, th I know, know I said this, this story before, but I, I was crying, and I remember looking down on the floor, and I remember seeing, because it was a tan rug, it actually was a darker color now because of the teardrops. And I think we get comfortable in the life that we have a tendency to fall away 
of not doing what we're supposed to do. Like Verl said, the world is like we've never seen before. The world, it's not just the United States, the world. Think about that. Think about that. Things that we see today. But it's amazing how it begins. Just starts a little bit. Did you ever hear of a little leaven? Leaven's a whole lump. Scripture. The East. And you put it into leaven's a whole lump. And Jesus actually is giving that to us of saying, this is what happens. Just a little, little, little bit in. Just a little, little bit in. We see today, as prayer was taken out of school in 1962, kids don't even know who God is. They don't, they don't even have an idea. They heard, they know it here. They have no idea what he's made out of and what he wants us to do. My father graduated from Hamilton High School. And he's passed now. But he said, Sammy, I remember we had prayer in the morning. We had a Bible verse we read. And then we had the Pledge of Allegiance. Hamilton High School. So 1962, that was taken away. You might want to strap yourself down this one here because I almost fell over. 1973, abortion became legal. They say from 1973 till now, there was about 50 million abortions. They said in 2020, we'll have about 125,000 per day worldwide. Per day. It starts small. That's what he does. That's what the evil one does. He starts small. And then after a while, it's like a tsunami for what we see today. He started this in Genesis. We look at Genesis 3, and I'll give you the third Samuel view of it. Here it is now. God creates everything. Speaks it. This is good, he says. And this was good. And this was good. And then finally, he says, now I'm going to get my hands dirty. And he gets dust of the earth. And he forms man. But he says, you know what? It's not good for man to be alone. I'm going to give him a helpmate. Eve comes. Genesis 3 comes about that Satan shows up. It don't take long for him to start messing things up. He knows he only has a little bit of time in their minds, a little bit of time on, their, on this earth, and guess what? He's going to make the best of it. He tells her, he says, remember, this is 3 Samuel version, so don't come up to me afterwards and say that. It doesn't say that. He goes up to him, and he, and she, and he says to her, is it, is it that you can't eat any of these trees? Think about it, how he put it. And she says, oh, no, no, we could eat of the trees, but we can't eat of that tree. And God put it right in the middle of the garden. She goes, no, that, that tree there we can't, um, or, or, or we should surely die. And we can't even touch it. And she adds that part. God said, just don't eat it. She puts it, we shouldn't even touch it. So then... Here it goes. This is where we start. And he says, you can eat of that tree. You, will, you shall surely not die. One word he changes. God says you shall surely die. He says you shall not surely die. One word. So then it starts. We see it, as I can imagine how it was going in her mind and, and how this all comes about. 
And all of a sudden, we see the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. Because he says, if you do take this, look at it. Looks good. Man, oh man. And you can be like God. You, you can know good from evil. A little bit. That's all we needed. And she got it. And she ate of it. And then she gave it to her husband. We see it in 1 John 2.16. It actually talks about this. John says, stay away from this. This is all the worldly ways. Stay away from this. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. That you want to become like God. He says, stay away from it. I want you to go to Ephesians 6. Ephesians 6. And I'm just joking around. We're, we're going to get you out of here. Not too long. A couple hours. I told that outside service. I said, no, don't, don't worry about it. We're only going to be here for three hours. They were like, what? Ephesians 6.10 the one thing I want you to understand that we are fighting a, an invisible war. You understand that? It's an invisible war. Just like this pandemic we got. We can't see this thing floating in the air. We can't see this thing laying on something and then we touch it, we get it, whatever it may be. It's the same exact thing. It's an invisible war. But we look now in all of the book of Ephesians. I love this. Paul is writing to the Ephesians to help them realize God, God's incredible grace and the importance of relying upon his grace and attempting to stand firm in their faith. That's the first five chapters. So he's drilling them with this. Now, granted, you have to understand this now. He's in prison. He's in Rome. He's been in prison for two years now. And back in the day, what they would do, they would chain you up to a guard in biblical times. They, you know how you ever see, uh, even like the Stooges, you know, the ball and chain, you know, the, 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 one, the one episode with the ball and chain or dragging the ball and chain around. Well, they would actually secure you to a, a guard. So I want you to think of this when we go through this, that the envision uh, of, of, of Paul talking or being with this guard and talking to him and saying, like, like, what's the helmet? Like, like, you know, when, when you put that on, like, like what part does it protect? And like, what the, well, we put it on, we fit and we secure it and make sure it doesn't fall. Well, talk, let's talk about the breastplate because the breastplate covers, you know, well, that covers, you know, a lot here of your, your vitals and this, that, and the other. Well, your sword is a certain side. Do you put a, do, how about your, the shoes? Like, I see the shoes. I see the shin guard. I see that. Like, what? The, why is the belt? Picture it. Picture Paul saying, can you tell me a little bit about what you wear? And now this is what I love about how God just put this all together because Wednesday nights we've been going over like different parables and stuff like that and that's what it is Jesus given parables to his disciples that they would understand something that was going on in their day that they could get an idea about it some kind of clue of what they're talking what he's talking about God has actually given Paul Almost a parable here to put together for what we need in an invisible battle. The battle that we're talking about of how Satan comes in just puts a little bit of what he needs to say and do. And boy, how often do we take the bait? How often do we take the bait? So let's go through this. Let's go through this when he finally comes to chapter 6. And 
And verse 20, you don't have to go there. It says, for which I am an ambassador, this is Paul speaking, in bonds or chains, that thereof I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. So we know he's in chains as this is going on, okay? And he's writing all this. Verse 10. Finally, my brethren, he's talking to the saved, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. All of a sudden, he says, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might because he's getting to it. Paul's getting to it. He says, put on the whole armor of God. Picture that now, him talking to the guard, finding out all what he wears. And now he just brings it home. To the Ephesians. He says, the whole armor of God, not just some. You know what? I, wake, I woke up this morning. I said, you know what? Just give me like one piece. That's all I need, Lord. Give me one piece. He says, you need to put the whole armor of God on. That you may be able to stand because guess what? The enemy wants to push you back shove you back, right, as far as you could go. And then sometimes we just get so aggravated and so depressed and discouraged, we say, you know what? I've had it. I can't take it no more. He says, I want you to stand against the wiles of the devil. The wiles. I was telling this at 8 o'clock. You know the, uh, uh, the coyote uh, and the roadrunner? wily coyote, right? And that's what he always tried to do. The coyote always was trying to get that roadrunner. Everything he could try to do, this is what Satan does. This is what he does. But he only has to give you a little bit. You know, Pastor, I don't know. I don't know why my family's falling apart. I don't know why my marriage is falling apart. I don't know why I lost my job. I don't know why I'm addicted to pornography. I don't know why I'm drinking. I don't know what... Put the whole armor of God on. Because if he did not do enough for you, something's wrong. When the father couldn't even look upon him because his sins were poured upon him. Every sin that was committed. That the father can't even look upon him. Because of the sins upon him. He says, put the whole armor of God that you would be protected. For the wiles of the devil are going to come to you. Verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Let's stop right there. The wrestle part in the Greek is actually three types of wrestling. And what they did back in the day in the biblical times... There was going to be one man standing and the other man six foot under. One man is going to come out alive. It wasn't a wrestling. The wrestle here is death match. What they would do, they would put, they would put um, uh, leather straps all the way up the forearm, all the way up to the, to the, um, to the hand. Did you ever see when, when a boxer is getting ready and they wrap the tape around the knuckles like this? Okay, so the knuckles are all, all protected, right? Right here, they would put pieces of metal, like nails and stuff like that. It was a brutal match. Only one standing at the end. Two guys in a ring, one standing. This is what Paul is describing. This is what you're going to go through. Because he hits hard. He says, for we wrestle not against, here we go, flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rules of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. We know this verse. This is Christianity 101. We were taught this. We teach this in Sunday school. And I love when people say this verse. Oh, Sammy, well, you know, see what's going on. Well, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. We know darkness and power. I know that. But there's an application that has to be put on. I know what's going on out there. Verl was just saying it. Did you ever see anything like this? We just heard a little while on the, 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 the first service. 
They said they canceled, they closed all the churches in California? I, I, I said this in both services. There'll be a cold day in hell before they shut the services down. They could shut this building. They could shut the property. We'll go over Anthony's. I don't care. We'll go somewhere. We'll go at the lake. I don't care where we'll go. We're going to give the word of God out. We will not be conquered. The ba- Man, I get choked up. Because the war has already been won. It's been won on the cross. We know we're going to be going through this. But what are we doing about it? Men, husbands, fathers, grandfathers, uncles. We've got a big responsibility. And we're going to look at this. And I want to see where you stand. Because when I was doing this sermon, it was amazing. I'm doing this sermon and I was studying. And all of a sudden, my wife was walking and she texts me a picture. And there was a picture of this guy that he had a shield. She didn't know what I was preaching on. There's a shield. He has a shield, a full-size shield. We're going to go over that. And behind him is his little child, son or daughter, whatever it was in the picture. And all these fiery darts are coming down. And he's there with the shield. We're going to look at this. And we're going to see where we stand. Because I look at sometimes we get comfortable in our Christian walk. And when God tells us to do something, we need to do it daily. So let's look at this. For the stuff that we're battling against, we know, we know what kind of battle it's going to be. We know it's principalities against powers, against the rules of darkness. We went over this in Daniel, Daniel 10, when Daniel was praying and this prayer got, got fetched up because there was this demon that was holding it up. 21 days he fasted and prayed. Then Michael comes, the archangel, he says, listen, we've heard your prayer. I had to go help, I had to go help the other angel because he was... What do you think? It was just then that this happened? These are the things that go on. The demonic forces that are, are me doing this sermon, I know I'm going to get pounded. He does not want you to hear this. I got pounded during the week, and I got, and I know gonna, this, this week I know I'm going to get pounded. The one time I preached, I'll never forget, I preached on hell. And I told everybody, pray for me. Because the week before that, I got destroyed. The week after that, I knew I was going to get hit hard. But I had peace. Amen. And I said, Lord, you paid it all. Amen. You paid it all, Lord. You give me that peace that I would go, the only understanding I could have. If it wasn't for you, guess what? I'd be, I'd be in a nut place. No, I wouldn't be able to handle it. No, he says, I give you peace. And he did. Bring it on, bring it on. Guess what? Because I know that my Savior said, as long as I do this and stand firm with him, I am protected. My family's protected. So let's look at this, verse 13. Let's see what he says. Wherefore, here we go now, wherefore, this is what you need to do. Wherefore, that's what wherefore means. There's an application. Just don't give me the verse that has, 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 there's, uh, I wrestle with flesh and blood. There has to be some kind of application. Here's the application. Take unto you the whole, no, nah, this is some armor. No, the whole armor of God. That you may be able to withstand in the evil days and having done all to stand. We see in verse 14, stand again. There's four stands. One in verse 11, two in 13, and one in 14. He says, stand firm because what he wants to do is push you back. What happens when he pushes us back so many times? Guess what? What do we do? We turn around, retreat. He says, you're not supposed to retreat. I've given you all the armor to go into battle. 
I was telling the, the, the gang outside when we were preaching outside, did you ever see the fire department, uh, uh, our cops, um, uh, our military, the flag that they have on their shoulder, on their sleeve, the stars point forward. The stripes go back. The stars are, that means they will never retreat. They're going forward. That's what he tells us to do. Do not retreat. He says, stand, stand firm with your whole armor of God. Let's look at 14. Stand, here we go again. Therefore, here we go, what we're going to do, having your loins girt about with truth. The loins. What in the world is he talking about? Now think about this. When you get dressed, do you put your belt on first? This is what he's talking about. It's the belt of truth. Tell me what person puts their belt on first. This is what the soldiers would do first. Because the belt held some of the other armor up. If you see your breastplate of how heavy that was, well, some of that, that locked in together. He says, this is the loin, this is, this is the loin the, 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 uh, of, of, uh, of truth. And we know that he is what? The devil is the father of lies. We see that in John 8, 44. But we know that God says in 14, 6 of John, I'm the way, the truth, and the life our Savior is. He's the father of lies. And he will put things in your head of different things going on, whether it be in your home, whether it be in your work, whatever. The lies that try to start wearing you down. The truth, the truth of who you are. You were bought with a price, a precious price on that cross. This is what we need to grab a hold of. The loins. Let's look at the breastplate, the loins. And the other thing, let me go back with the loins, though. I got Verl right here in the front. He's a soldier. Verl's looking at me like, oh, what's he going to say? He's a soldier. I'm a soldier. They just said, listen, we got to get going. All right. He's getting dressed. I'm getting dressed. I look at his, his, his belt, or I look at his breastplate, or I look at his shoes. Where I, Yo, Verl, you're... Your, your breastplate needs it. It's got to come over more, man. If you get shot here, you know. We're supposed to be looking out for one another. That's the, that's, that's the purpose of the church. That's the purpose of my marriage. That's the purpose why I had kids, even though I want them to do stuff around the house. But that's the purpose of me, you know, making sure they're protected. We're supposed to be there for one another. That's the, that's the church. Encouraging one another instead of tearing down. Being there for one another. And sometimes, like I said, we get so complacent. We, we, we get comfortable in our Christianity. These are the things that we need, he's saying. Because you are going to get hit. So we have the, the loin, the, the truth. Then he says, let's go to the next piece. And having on the breastplate of righteousness. And I love how God designed that. He already had the Roman guard of knowing what he's going to wear. And he says, I'm going to use that in a mighty way. I love when God just takes it and just uses it in such a great way. The breastplate locked into the belt to relieve some of the weight. So you got truth and righteousness working together. I love that. When we look at the breastplate itself, it protected all the vitals. Paul says, where's your heart? Where's your heart at? For what I've done for you. You know Satan's going to give you that little bit of bait in front of you. Why do you take it? Are you, do you have the whole body of armor on? Because he's he tells us to flee from things like that. The breastplate. It's your holy character. Remember, obedience leads to a godly life. I tell my kids, I says, guess what? This is what I'm concerned. 
This is what I'm concerned about. Your walk. Your walk, that's what I'm concerned about. I do look for what, they, what comes out of here, too, what they say. But this here tells me all. I've been tricked many times when stuff comes out of here by people. People that I would have thought never in a million years that he or she would have been doing that. And tricked because of what comes out. But when I see this, that shows me everything. He says, your character, where's your character? Your, 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 your godly character. The breastplate. Remember, locks into the truth. His righteousness. It's, a, it's the blessed breastplate of righteousness. It's his righteousness, not my righteousness. His righteousness. Gird your heart. Gird your heart. Look at verse 15. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Your feet. This is an amazing thing about the feet. The shoes they had, a lot of the times they'd come up all the way to the shin because they're in battle with swords now. They didn't have guns any back, back then, so they had swords. So any, any piece of armor that protected, that we're protecting. They would have cleats. I didn't tell you this already, did I? No, that was the last two services ago. There were cleats on the bottom, half inch. So what they would do these cleats would give them traction of what they needed to do, especially if they had their shield up or whatever it may be. If they were coming, if the enemy's coming forward, you were what? The foundation or the support or stand fast is already being applied. Paul says, guess what? This is how Satan works. He pushes, he pushes, he pushes, he pushes. Guess what? You are to stand firm. We look at the feet being the foundation, a good footing to back up, to dig in. That footing, we look at houses. If you have a good footing, guess what? The house is shot. The foundation is the most important thing. He says, well, that's your, if your feet are on the ground, that's your foundation. We know what our foundation is, Christ, of course, but he's talk, we're talking about the shoes here. And a lot of times, if they seen somebody injured that was almost out of it completely, guess what? Those cleats would go over there and dig into these people that they were battling against. So to feed with the gospel of peace, you don't have to go there, but in Ephesians 4.15, I'm, I'm picking on Verl today, but I do have, I, I got something going wrong with Verl. And they says in 4.15, it says, but speaking the truth in love. In love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. If I see something going on in his life that is not going to where it's supposed to be, that's what the body of the church, at. we're together as a body of saying, listen, man, I don't, I don't like the path you're going in. I'm not digging it. How about if we pray about it? I'm going in love with him. If I go up to him and say, bro, what is your problem? No, I want to go in love as Christ would come to me in love. So he says, go in love. Go in peace. Now, this is one I love. Oh, wait a minute. I, I jumped too much. Let's go to feet back. We'll go to feet back. We are to give the gospel. We are not to hesitate or be ashamed of it. For the times we live in, I can tell you right now, Jesus is coming soon. We have the opportunity to give the word. Give the word. And the other thing is, even when I teach the kids, I tell them, I said, listen, the other thing is, you need to flee from sin. The only thing that Satan should be seeing is the emblem of Nike on the back of your shoe, fleeing from what he's trying to tempt you with. Grown-ups, that goes for us. Because he only has to come in just a little bit. And he's so, so wild when he does it. Okay, 16. He says, above, above all. Look at this. Above all. Taking, look at that now. Taking, you're taking this. You're taking it. The shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to 
quench, look at this, all the fiery darts of the wicked. Not some, all. Above all, taking the shield of faith. Believing in all his promises. Taking God for, at his, for, 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 for what his word is. Now, the, 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 now this here, this, I, I love this, the shield. When you do this study, it talks about the shields. Of it's not the round shield, as, you know, uh, Captain America. It's not that. But even though they use that one. But this is not the shield. In the Greek, this is what they're talking about. It's a, uh, like a rectangle that would have actually pretty much covered the whole body. And just that illustration I told you about the guy with the shield and the kid behind him, this is the same thing. So as they would be getting ready to go into battle, the enemy is getting ready to shoot these arrows. And this is what they did. They tie something or they dip it in oil, light the arrow on fire, and here they come. So picture, picture 20,000 people with arrows, bow and arrows, okay? You would get the call, cover up, or whatever they would say, because here they come. It's like a tsunami, like a wall of fire coming their way. And what they would do, they'd put the shield in front of them, and then behind them, there would be another platoon behind them, and they would put the shield over top, lay it on top of that one, and, they would, and they, it was called a turtle box, as we know as turtle shell. And they would stay under it. Before they did that, and they knew what they were going to do, they had water, and they would dip the shield in water because in the front of the shield, it was leather. The leather would absorb all this water, and actually, when the, when, the, when the arrows would be coming, when they would hit the shield, they would extinguish. God says, put on the whole armor. And he says, they all, all the fiery darts of the wicked. The shield. And this is what I'm telling you about the fathers, the grandfathers. You being parents, you being husbands. What are we doing with all these fiery darts coming in? Because I said before, the, the world that we're living in right now, we need to practice this, men. Women, I'm going I'm to get on your case in a little bit right now. I'm not going to leave you out. But, you know, when, we, when, when I marry kids, I tell them, I said, you know what? You know, being the husband, you know, and they're like, yeah. I said, really stinks. You know why? Because you have a huge responsibility. You have a huge responsibility. And I'll stand in front of all of you and say, am I guilty? Absolutely. I'd be like Paul saying, yeah, I got both of my hands up saying, yes, I'm guilty. I should be praying this every day. This morning I woke up early. I prayed the whole thing of saying, Lord, I don't know what I'm going to go through. I do not know because it says in verse 13, the evil day. You don't know what day it is. But like I said, our army is ready to go. You don't know, you don't know what it's going to happen, but are you prepared? Are you prepared? All our army, navy, whatever it be, marines, whatever, all they got to do is get the call. They're ready to go. That's what God says. When that temptation comes, whatever fiery dart he's going to send to you, are you ready to go? Are you ready to go? So let's look at this. Let's look at 17. He says, and take the helmet of salvation. Let's stop there. The helmet. How important the helmet is. Not only does it protect the head, but the thought process. What does he put into our head? It's the insurance of salvation. How many times have we done something, and all of a sudden, you hear like this little voice, I can't believe you just did that. You call yourself a Christian. I can't believe you just, you just did that. You just took that. You, you, you just blew up on that guy. You just, how many times we get that in our head? 
This is the assurance of salvation, the helmet, of saying, you know what? I know I'm going to fall. I know I'm going to fall. But praise God, I get back on my feet and say, Lord, let's go. Amen. Let's go. Because it's already been forgiven. I ask for forgiveness and say, Lord, you know what? I'm going to put my back behind you. I'm going forward. That's what we need to do. The thought process of the things that go in your head. Pretty girl goes by. Pretty guy goes by. A pretty guy. <laughs> Handsome guy goes by. <laughs> Gotta love that one. But all this stuff goes in our head. God says, yeah, don't even, don't, don't entertain it. Don't entertain it. Get rid of it. Flee. Flee. Don't let it, don't let it mess with your thought process because guess what? Just a little bit. Next thing you know, things start happening. So we see the helmet. And now, the sword of the Spirit. The sword of the Spirit. The only offensive piece of weaponry he gives you. You can use it for defense, of course, but it's the only piece of armor for offense. Everything is defense. What does Jesus use when he's being tempted? It is written, he says. It is written, he says. It is written. Three times. He uses the scripture to defeat Satan. This is how precious the word is. That's what we need to do. So when I look at all this and I was going through it and I'm thinking to myself, I'm guilty. I'm guilty. And I like how God does it. He, he gets on our case first and then we give it to you. <laughs> but guess what? That's a great thing. Because we learn and we want to be more like him. We want to be transformed in the image of him. And I say, Lord, I'm, I'm guilty. I don't, I don't, I didn't pray this. I don't pray this. I, I, I know when something goes on, I know what I need to do. But you know what? I have to be reminded. That's what the truth, that's what the truth is right here in front of me. That's what I need to know. This is what I need to use. He gives us six things of armor. But I always say seven. The next thing, verse 18, he says, praying. Praying brings everything together. All the armor, my sword, all this is, 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 is all knitted together now because of prayer. And it's amazing. <clears throat> of all the things that go through this, as we were just talking about. I was even saying outside, of all the thoughts, everything else, the helmet, the breastplate, the helmet. I think some of you have probably seen the movie Private Ryan. And here it is, the one soldier, he's in the trenches, he's looking like this, and boom, he gets hit in the helmet. He knows he got hit, takes the helmet off, and he looks at the hole, but it was, it was indented, but it didn't go through. And he looked at it and saying, wow. And he looks up like this, a shot hits him. He took the helmet off just that one time. That's what Satan wants to see. Oh, Sammy, you didn't, you didn't pray that this morning? You didn't have to remind yourself? Is my word too good for you? that you could do it yourself? It only takes one time, and he comes in. That's what he wants to do. That's why I'm giving this to you. Because for what I see what's going on out in the world right now, as a church, we need to bond. We need to be there for one another. We need to encourage one another. We need to be the people that we're supposed to be as Christ is showing us how we're supposed to be. Yeah. 
I seen a shirt. I'm going to close. I seen a shirt <clears throat> that says, born once, die twice. Born twice, die once. And what that means is, born once, physical birth, die physical, die once, die twice is eternal damnation. You are separated from God, eternal death. Or, born twice, die once. Born physically, born spiritually. Jesus is talking to Nicodemus. He says, how am I supposed to be born again? What are you talking about born again? How can I go into my mother's womb again? It's impossible. Jesus says, no, 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 Nicodemus. No, no. Born in the spirit. Giving your life to Christ. Giving your life to God, Jesus would be saying. And then dying physically once. See, we have right now that we know of free speech. Free speech. Every, you could go to any protest or anything you could go talk about. Everybody says, well, we got free speech. You do have free speech. You also have a free will. And I don't know if all of you here, I would say the majority of you, know Christ as Lord and Savior. Well, maybe some of you don't. The armor that I was talking about was for believers who knows Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. He says, I will give that to you. If you look at all the armor that he gives you, that's Christ. Think about it. His truth, his righteousness, his assurance. Everything is Christ on you. He says, but you have the option. You have the option. Well, he's a loving God. He should be, he should accept everybody in heaven. Wait a minute. You got free speech, you got free will. It's up to you. If you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, all you have to, it's a simple prayer. Father, forgive me for my sins. I'm asking you to come into me. Change my life, Lord. Because for what I'm hearing, I want this. I want this armor. But most of all, I want you as my Lord and Savior. Change my life. Let me be closer to you. I want that. It's a simple prayer of wanting him and acknowledging that you're a sinner. That's all it is. He's done everything on the cross. We don't have to give money. We don't have to, you know, help an old lady across the street, even though it's a good idea. You know, there's, there's things that it's not going to get you to heaven. Baptism, uh, uh, you know, any, anything of good works, guess what? It has nothing to do with it. Then why would he have to die on the cross if we could earn our own way? Doesn't make sense. He paid it all. The price was paid, accepted by God. He took the whole, the whole wrath of his father upon him. So we did not have to. You too could have the whole armor of God if you accept Christ today. Pray that prayer. Lord, I need you. And I believe in you, Lord. Forgive me my sins. Let's bow and pray. Father, we come to you. And Lord, thank you, Lord, that your word is so true, so mighty to us. Father, we pray that we would be transformed in the image of you. That the things that we read here today, Lord, how guilty we are. How guilty we are, Lord, of not doing our part of being the soldiers that we're supposed to be. So, Father, I pray for all of our the fathers, the husbands. But Lord, I lift up the wives too. Let the wives be the helpmates that they're supposed to be for the husbands, as Scripture says. Let them be there continually for them. Encouragement, 
praying, and to be and to love with one another. Father, once again, we thank you. We thank you for today. Thank you for your precious word. We ask this all in Jesus' name. But before we close, I want to give you one illustration since I have Verl up here and I didn't want to call him up. And now this is a great time to do it. All the armor that we stand over here, Verl. All the armor that we have, the only thing that's not protected is our back. Did you notice that? Our back is wide open. Because when we dis get discouraged, we walk away. And our back is wide open. And here comes that wall of flaming darts. This is where accountability comes in. When I have a brother like this, and all of us as the church, his back is wide open. But when my back is to his back, I got his back, he's got my back. Amen. And that's how we're supposed to be as a church. To be there for one another, to encourage one another. People are so important for what God instructs us to do and how we're supposed to be. Let's stand up, stand firm, be the people we're supposed to be and do it. Okay, let's stand as we get ready to close out our service. We're going to do a little bit of the wondrous, wonderful cross. As he paid that price we could never pay. Amen? Amen. Amen.